This week on Summer Screen, we take a look at Constitution Day, new teachers, and health cards. Good afternoon, Dutch Fort. Today is Friday, September 18th, and your Silver Screen Report starts now. Hey Maddie, did you know that yesterday was Constitution Day? Yeah, I learned all about it in my journalism class. It's a holiday designed for us as American citizens to remember the roots of our country. Thomas DeSetto checks it out. Constitution Day wasn't always celebrated as a holiday, but back in 2005, a federal law was passed stating that all federally funded schools and universities have to show a program to the students on the Constitution. Okay, well, you know, it created a stable government for the United States back in 1789 when it was ratified, and probably without that, we wouldn't uh, be here today. Who knows what would have happened if they didn't get that hammered out. And it also uh, guarantees basic uh, freedoms that are, that are so important to us as Americans and I think important around the world. You know, we have to celebrate where we came from as a nation, and it also helps get word out there for people that maybe don't know what's entailed in the Constitution. It may help them learn about what our country stands for. The Constitution is important because it is the framework for what we go by, how we govern people, and how we have our set laws and rules in the United States. Students and teachers alike have mixed opinions on what the most important amendment is in the Constitution. The most important amendment, in my opinion, would be the amendment that gives women the right to vote, mainly because uh, it gives women an equal voice in the government. I would have to go with the First Amendment again, just because it has been used in so many different cases and lawsuits. Um, and freedom of speech and freedom of religion are two of the most important things, in my opinion, that we have the right to as United States citizens. Students and teachers let their imaginations run free as they create their own amendments. If I could create my own amendment, it would probably be one to limit school to four days a week. For the most part, because of the process to get an amendment passed, I don't know that I would create anything good enough to get it through all of the processes that you have to go through. This has been Thomas DeSetto with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is ascertain, a verb meaning to perceive or learn. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we tested students' knowledge of the First Amendment. the five freedoms of the First Amendment of the Constitution? Um, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, um, and three others. Do you know the three others? No, I do not. All right. The five freedoms? Yeah, the five freedoms. Like where they say the, the, you have the freedom of life, liberty, and peace of happiness or whatever? No. No? I don't know. <laughs> Freedom of religion, um, <laughs> bear, freedom, freedom to bear arms. Um, I know you know this person. <laughs> um, freedom from play or shoot. Do you know the five freedoms of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution? No, I do not. You do? <laughs> no. Do you have it? Do you want to take a guess? It's America. It's America. We're free. <laughs> Doesn't really matter as long as we're free. Yeah. All right. Uh, freedom of speech. You know, freedom of religion. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> pursuit of happiness, life, liberty, property. No. No, that's not it. <laughs> Whoops. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of, yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> hey Sam, have you filled out your health card? No, I actually haven't. Well, you might want to get that in as soon as possible. Santa Dill checks out the consequences of not turning in your health card. For the safety of all students, the district requires students to have an up-to-date health card on file. 
Every student in uh, Dutch Fork High School should have a health card. It lets the nursing staff know if there are any medical needs um, that need to be addressed during the school year. Health cards are essential so the nurses know how to handle emergency situations quickly and effectively. I think it's important because if you have an allergic reaction or something, you really don't know what to do. You don't have a really go-to thing. I think it's important to turn in your health card because it lets the nurse know like what kind of allergies you have and if like you have a reaction it'll be easier to get the medication towards you. When we are going over them um, we have to put them into our computer system and address every health need that um, needs to be addressed during the school year and we are already into the fourth week of school and there are a lot of students that have not turned in health cards. So that's why the urgency so that I can make sure I'm addressing all the health needs. Because of the seriousness associated with some students' health problems, students are legally not allowed on campus without a health card on file. Therefore, there are consequences for failing to turn in your health card. Um, the consequences are set by their administrator. Um, each administrator has um, met and come up with the consequences. I don't think there should be any consequences. It's really not that big of a deal. Like if you have allergies that are serious, turn it in. If you don't, then it's not really a big deal. I think you should probably get a in-school suspension or something like that because a lot of bad things could happen right there in that situation. So we're not trying to do anything punitive, but if it goes that far, then we could. What we're going to do first off is bring the student in, sit them down, talk to them, tell them why we've got to have the information, have, make a phone call to the parent, do the parent contact right there with the student in the room, and then we would sit there and you know send it home and expect it to come back. If you haven't turned in your health card, do it as soon as possible. This has been Zena Doe with your Silver Screen Report. Dutch Fork graduate Becca Valencia is back at school, now teaching science and forensics. Adam Amick checks it out. Science teacher Rebecca Valencia is used to the classrooms of Dutch Fork, but now she is leading instead of learning. It's been really interesting thus far. Um, it took maybe three weeks or so of like the first week that teachers were being or, like were back um, and the first few weeks of school for all of the faculty that was here when I was here to get the for me to get the, oh hey, you used to be a student here. Valencia has gotten the opportunity to work with some of her former teachers. Mr. Cox, Miss um, Humphreys, uh, Miss Thur, some of my favorite teachers that I had when I was here. I just remember that she was very enthusiastic and um, an eager learner and um, very bright. You know, I've taught a lot of students in my years and, and if she saw me anywhere out, I would obviously recognize her. And it's been really great to be able to collaborate with them on a professional level um, because they had me as a student so they already knew my personality, they knew my work ethic. Students say being a graduate of Dutch Fork makes Valencia a better teacher. It's good, you know, because she knows like the rules and everything from past teachers at Dutch Fork and all the Dutch Fork ways. It's pretty cool because she, she's an alumni so she knows how things work here and knows how everything kind of works in the school. Being one of the first STEM students at Dutch Fork, Valencia is amazed at how the program has changed since she once was a student. It's definitely grown. There are a lot more students in it than when I was here. Um, I think the expectations have grown um, as far as like what you have to do to be able to graduate with a STEM medal. Both students and teachers alike enjoy Miss Valencia's teaching habits. She just like has a younger aspect, you know, of how to do things. She kind of talks in our younger language. She's a, a very bright young lady and um, I bet she, she has a very engaging teaching style as well and um, I think she probably uh, is in this profession because she cares, cares very much about the students. She does good with the lectures, she goes in depth with the lectures and she kind of adds it to the activity we'll do in class. This has been Adam Amick with your Silver Screen Report. Have you heard that we also have a new chorus teacher? No, but here's Sarah Emily Risch with more about the program. New course teacher Rebecca Kilgis brings with her a unique teaching style different than past course teachers. She has a different method of teaching. She has taught us a lot more efficiently than past teachers. She's a good teacher, you know, she teaches like in a different way. Like, she, she like, she like boosts our spirits up when we when she teaches us. Well, I love to sing. I've always loved to sing and then when I did chorus, I just loved the people and teachers and learning how to read music. It's just a lot of fun. I really enjoy singing as a whole and I love singing with other people um, just because it sounds so beautiful and so pure. Kilgis has taught in other schools across the country, making her highly qualified to teach chorus at Dutch Fork. I actually went back to school and got a second 
bachelor's degree in music education from the University of South Carolina in 1998. So I haven't been doing this too long. Since then, I've gone to Wisconsin. I've taught in Wisconsin, kindergarten through 12th grade. I taught in Tennessee, high school choir. And then most recently, I was in Roanoke, Virginia, where I taught middle school choir and high school choir. I was there for eight years. Students are encouraged to join chorus and be a part of the fine arts department. Don't take it too hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's about meeting new people. And if you love to sing, it's going to be a great class for you. Well, I would say go for it because if you don't think you can sing good, you just, it's not an individual thing, it's a group. It's a group thing, and it's like it's not just you by yourself unless you do solos, but it's great to get to know the people in chorus, and it's just one big family after a while as you get further into the year. This has been Sarah Emily Risch with your Silver Screen Report. As you may have noticed, this is our fourth show, and we still haven't introduced ourselves. Yeah, let's take a look at this year's Silver Screen staff. <laughs> And now for some announcements. The club fair is going on today during all four lunches. Make sure to see what kind of clubs you may be interested in. Homecoming dance tickets are available in the Commons during all lunches. Tickets are $15 per person and $25 per couple. Homecoming candidates' paperwork and money is due to Ms. Holden no later than next Friday. Homecoming candidates will have their pictures taken for the football program after school on Tuesday, September 29th. Now here's Sam with more. Thanks, Maddie. Jocelyn's will be here on Tuesday for all seniors to order their graduation supplies. Make sure that you get your car off the band grid by 345 every day, otherwise you may lose your parking pass. Don't forget to support the Foxes tonight at 7.30 p.m. Here's a short promo. Let's get hyped, Foxes. So I love it, I love it, love it, I love it, love it, I love it. So I love it, I love it, love it, I love it, love it, I love it. So I love it, I love it, love it, I love it, love it, I love it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Maybe we take a look at Miss Valencia, Blue equals Sam, and Red equals Maddie. Don't put your hands on here. That's why it looked weird because we were like. <laughs> I got it. it. Wow. Check. Got the camera in a sports photography mode. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> There's Sarah Emily Riz. She's right there. <laughs> We're like.